Hi everyone, I'm George Tilston, a data manager from the University of Manchester. I work in the Centre for Health Informatics and my role is focused on improving access to health data sets for research. This presentation will begin with a very brief background, as I'm sure you're all aware of the importance of hearing loss. I will then introduce the National Institute for Health Research, or the NIHR Health Informatics Collaborative, or HIC for short, and specifically the hearing health theme. I will then describe the process of turning raw audiology data from the source system into a standardised research database. This involves a data standard called OMOP, uh, which some of you might have heard of, and I'm sure a lot of you haven't, and I will cover this in more detail later on. Finally, I will explain how researchers can gain access to the research database and the next steps for the theme. As most of you will be aware, hearing loss is a growing issue in the UK, driven partly by an ageing population. An estimated 12 million UK adults, one in five, have hearing loss, and this number is set to rise to 14 million by 2035. The total cost in the UK of untreated disabling hearing loss is estimated at £25.5 billion per year. Hearing loss affects everyday functioning, communication, social interactions and employment opportunities. There are potential links between hearing loss and other conditions which can be revealed by analysing large amounts of healthcare records. The National Institute for Health and Care Research, Health Informatics Collaborative, which will now be referred to as the NIHR HIC, is a collaboration between NHS trusts, organisations and health boards, including those hosting NIHR biomedical research centres. Working together to facilitate the equitable reuse of NHS data for translational research. The NIHR HIC has established cross-site data collaborations in areas such as cardiovascular medicine, critical care, cancer and more. The aims of the HIC are to support the establishment and maintenance of catalogued, comparable, comprehensive flows of patient data at each trust, and then to create a governance framework for data sharing and reuse. This framework involves data sharing agreements, publication policy, and streamlining data reuse. HIC themes always have a lead site, and this is typically where the data is combined in a secure environment. Hearing Health is the first theme to be co-led by multiple sites, so that's UCL, Manchester and Nottingham. The data will be combined at UCL's Data Safe Haven, which is a secure environment for accessing sensitive data. All NHS Hearing Health providers are now welcome to join the theme, so please do reach out if you are interested, and there will be details uh, later on in this presentation. A steering committee group with patient representation reviews research proposals regularly, and the theme has obtained Research Ethics Committee approval for the research database, meaning that the legal basis for using this resource for research is covered and individual studies don't need to go through this process. The steering committee has written a manuscript which describes the setup, structure and use of the HIC resource and it is expected to be published soon with the title Creating a Health Informatics Data Resource for Hearing Health Research. Now that you hopefully have a better understanding of the HIC, and the valuable research that it can facilitate, I will explain in more detail the process of extracting data from audiology systems and transforming it into a research database. This slide shows the flow of data from source system to aggregated research outputs. So starting with um, the left hand side, each contributing site extracts audiology data from their source system. So far we have done this with Audit Base and Practice Navigator so we can share useful scripts with other sites that use those systems. I won't be going into detail about how data was extracted from Audit Base or Practice Navigator, but I'm happy to talk to anyone uh, that is interested. So once the data is extracted and loaded locally at each hospital, there are two important steps to be completed at the site. Sites must exclude any patients that have opted out of their data being used for research, and they need to pseudonymize the data so that no identifiable data is leaving the hospitals. The next step is feeding the data into the OMOP pipeline, which has been developed by UCLH. The level of work required here will depend on which audiology system the data was extracted from. Audit Base users should be able to relatively easily apply the pipeline as it has been tested on Audit Base and only requires a minimal amount of customization. A lot of work has gone into making this pipeline as reusable as possible, so we hope that it will not take too much editing uh, for new sites. 
Users of other systems will still be able to apply the pipeline, but it will require more work and customization and collaboration with um, other sites. This step also incorporates data quality checks, for example, excluding unrealistic values. Having the data quality checks at this point means the same checks will be applied at each site, keeping it standardized. Once each site has standardized their data using the OMOP pipeline, the data can then be securely uploaded to the data safe haven via a web portal. The data from each site will then be combined easily, given that they are all in the same format. Researchers from contributing sites can apply to access and analyze it by submitting a research proposal. Once approved, they will be granted access to a secure virtual desktop environment where they will have access to only the data that they need to answer their research question. When analysis is complete, aggregated outputs and charts can be exported from the environment as long as they've been checked for statistical disclosure control. There's a lot of resources online for this sort of checking if you're not familiar with it. This would involve things like emitting small counts that might make a patient identifiable. I will now go into more detail about the OMOP data standard and how we applied it to audiology data. I would also like to thank data engineers and OMOP experts at UCLH, specifically Baptiste Ribert and Tim Roberts, as they developed the pipeline which we used to do the transformation. For those of you that aren't aware of OMOP, it stands for the Observational Medical Outcomes Partnership. It's a common data model developed by the Observational Health Data Sciences and Informatics, or Odyssey, community. This diagram shows at a high level what the OMOP common data model aims to achieve. Multiple sources of data, potentially in a wide variety of formats, can be standardized by mapping to the common data model. This then facilitates federated analysis, meaning that one methodology and one set of analysis scripts can be run across multiple data sets, which was previously unachievable. This slide shows the OMOP common data model. The left-hand box is the most useful for this presentation, as it describes the core OMOP tables, which aim to cover all health data. I will now explain how individual tables in this schema have been used to represent the audiogram data. So this slide attempts to visualize how the OMOP common data model has been mapped to the Pyoto and audiometry data. The tables on the left are the common data model tables. For the audiogram data, the procedure occurrence and observation tables are the most useful. Procedure occurrence can be used to describe the audiometric test as it is a procedure performed by a clinician on a patient. We then need a way of recording individual measurements related to the procedure. And this is where the observation table is useful. As you can see, the individual frequencies which are tested during an audiometric test are recorded as individual observations. Each of these can then be linked to an additional observation, indicating, for example, whether it was air or bone conduction. To identify OMOP codes for each of these audiological concepts, a web tool called Athena was used. You can search for very specific terms and the tool will present a list of OMOP results with information about the vocabulary, validity, and whether they are standard. It is best practice to use standard concepts wherever possible. Once the OMOP concepts have been decided and agreed, these are what each site will map their data to. Given that there are two main tables being used to describe patient audiograms here, procedure occurrence and observation, it is essential to link these in a meaningful way. The OMOP common data model has a mechanism for this called the fact relationship table. As you can see from this slide, the fact relationship table is able to relate records from different tables. In this example, the procedure occurrence record, which represents the audiometric test, is linked to the observation record, which represents the type of conduction, in this case air conduction. The relationship in this case is has modification. This means that the conduction record is a modification of the audiometric test record. This approach allows lots of information to be attached to an audiometric test, such as conduction type and any masking involved. This increases the capabilities uh, when researchers come to analyze the data set. Once data has been converted to the OMOP CDM and standardized, the OMOP pipeline will then transform the data into a research-ready format ready for HIC researchers to access via a secure virtual environment. 
the audiogram data will be one row per patient per audiogram, making it easy to use for analysis. This slide shows an example row of how the audiogram data would look to a researcher in the final combined data set. This record was an air conduction audiogram without any mask thresholds, hence the blank cells for some fields. So if you go across from the top left, we have the patient ID and audiogram ID, then the date and the conduction type, which is typically air or bone in this data. This slide only shows a subset of the fields that would be avail available. So in reality, there would be many more frequencies than just 1000 and 2000 Hertz. For each frequency in each ear, you can see there are fields for the threshold, the mask threshold and the masking level. The value of 40 on the top section here refers to 40 decibels, meaning that the minimum volume a patient could hear a sound of 1000 Hertz in their left ear is 40 decibels. So hopefully um, this data format makes sense to you. And this is what would be presented to researchers to do their analysis. So far, I have described how raw patient data is extracted at individual hospitals, transformed and standardized using OMOP, and then provided in a research ready format. Now I will talk about the process involved for a researcher to get access to the resulting data. I just want to highlight that access is limited to sites that have contributed data to the theme. Once this has taken place, researchers from that site are able to submit research proposals to access and analyze the data. Patient and public involvement, or PPI, is a core element of this process. Proposals must outline how they plan to include the opinions of the patients and public in their research, and then the proposal is reviewed by a group of PPI experts who will focus on the plain English summary. This feedback is then provided to the study team who may be recommended to make some changes before the proposal is then submitted to the theme steering committee. The committee will review the proposal at the next meeting, considering the appropriateness of the data request, the robustness of the analysis plan and the PPI activity. Study teams with approved proposals will be granted access to the data safe haven where they will be provided with access to the minimum amount of data needed to answer their research question. Now I will briefly explain the next steps for the Hair and Health HIC theme. Some final steps are needed to get the OMOP pipeline working on Manchester data, and it will be uploaded to the UCL Data Safe Haven, where the UCLH data already sits. Nottingham and Cambridge are also making progress towards contributing to this database, so hopefully soon we'll have a data store with several sites uh, OMOP data in it. A flagship project will investigate the relationship between hearing devices and hearing loss to showcase the value of this resource. This will be shared with the community in a publication in due time. Further opportunities for funding this work are being explored so that the theme can be sustainable for the future and the hard work setting it up won't go to waste. And finally, the theme is considering expanding on the PPIE work to date, which is patient uh, participation and engagement uh, with focus groups and a potential manuscript. If you're involved in an institution with an audiology department, you're welcome to join our theme and we would encourage you to reach out to us using the contact details on this slide and the next. Um, I would say if your department uses audit based, the OMOP pipeline would be run much more easily with less customization, uh, although we do encourage anyone else using other software to also get in touch as we can still work with you. Thank you for listening. Uh, contact details on this slide for clinical leads within the theme and myself. So please feel free to reach out to us if you're interested. Thank you.